Thank you, Dr. Smith. We want to thank Dr. Gary Wright and the University Concert Choir, Mr. Tim Altman and the University Band, and Dr. Smith for being with us this morning. Seated in the audience to my right are the UNCP Board of Trustees, Vice Chancellors, other administrators, and to my left, the esteemed faculty of this university. At this time, I wish to recognize our Board of Trustees who give so much of themselves to this great institution and ask them to stand to be recognized. It is also my privilege to introduce the Grand Marshal of today's ceremony, Dr. Jeffrey Geller. Dr. Geller, Dr. Geller is professor in the Department of Philosophy and Religion and is UNC Pembroke's 2003 recipient of the coveted UNC Board of Governors Award for Excellence in Teaching. Please join me again in congratulating Dr. Geller on a great accomplishment. Seated next to Dr. Geller is Mr. Koji Sato, President of the Student Government Association. Dr. Tom Dooling, Chair of the General Faculty. Mr. Hal Sargent, President of the UNCP Alumni Association. Dr. Stanley Smith, Pastor at the Chestnut Street United Methodist Church in Lumberton. Next, you will see Chancellor Alan Metters. <laughs> U.S. Senator from North Carolina, John Edwards. <laughs> President Molly Corbett Broad, University of North Carolina. Dr. Ruth Dial Woods, representing the UNC System Board of Governors. And Mr. Henry Lewis, Vice Chair, the UNC Pembroke Board of Trustees. Dr. Elizabeth Normandy, from the Department of Political Science and Public Administration, who will later introduce our speaker. <laughs> At this time, I ask Dr. Woods to step forward and present greetings from the Board of Governors. Without further introductions, she will be followed by President Broad, Mr. Lewis, Dr. Dooling, Mr. Sado, and Mr. Sargent. Dr. Woods. Senator Edwards, President Broad, Chancellor Meadows, other distinguished members of the platform. Meeting expectations is a significant task. As graduates, you have achieved this significant task and have successfully met, and in some cases may have exceeded, expectations that you had for yourself and the expectations that others might have had for you. Your experience here at the University of North Carolina at Pembroke will unquestionably place an indelible mark on the rest of your life, and you will never again be the same. This institution was birthed in a visionary quest for access and equity, a principle which today has been adopted by the university system as a strategic directive more than 100 years after the establishment of this institution. I challenge each of you today to continue this vision and to keep these principles at the forefront of your future endeavors, whatever your choice or career. The university not only prepares students for leadership, I am pleased to announce two appointments by the University Board of Governors. Mrs. Sherry Beasley has been appointed to the North Carolina Center for Nursing, and Dr. Jose Deruda has been appointed to a term to expire in 2007 to the Education Advisory Council of the North Carolina School of Science and Mathematics. 
on behalf of the 32 members of the Board of Governors of the University of North Carolina, I offer our congratulations to you for having met our expectations for you as successful graduates of the North Carolina University system. You have fulfilled the expectations of the greatest educational system in these United States, and now the responsibility for creating a new world and new opportunities for generations yet to be born rest on your shoulders. To your parents, your grandparents, members of your extended families, and your significant others, we say thank you for your encouragement and support of these graduates and for allowing us to share in your pride and their accomplishments. Bruce Wilkinson and New York Times bestseller defined gimping as the process of putting the finishing touches and ornamental extras on furniture for quality and value. The University of North Carolina at Pembroke has today finished gimping you, the graduates, with educational, social, cultural, and political quality and value. May your experience the touch of greatness of Jabez as you live beyond the limits while stretching above obstacles, persons, and opinions. Enlarge your territory by exploring opportunities, exerting responsibility, and removing boundaries that may confine and inhibit you to mediocrity. Protect yourself from evil and serve all humankind without pain and live your life in peace as you strive to impact a better life and a better world. I know of no better challenge to give you than that of Mahatma Gandhi in today's world, and that is to reflect on today's world and what you can do to contribute to higher ways. You can and must be the change that you want to see in this world. Go forth today from good to greatness through leadership and service. Follow the directions of your North Star. Whether or not you make it all the way, it will certainly be worth the effort for what is best in human beings. You will continue to search for truth, and you will know that your own life and all that you touch will be the better for that effort. Congratulations and Godspeed. Today is the first day of the rest of your life. Make it great. To the 2003 graduating class of UNC Pembroke, I say hearty congratulations. This is a time of great joy and celebration for all of us and for your families. And on behalf of the entire 16 campus University of North Carolina, I am proud to offer best wishes and congratulations to each and every one of you. Uh, this event of commencement is one that has very significant symbolic meaning, and I am very pleased to share the platform today with North Carolina senior senators John Edwards, uh, R Ruth Dial Woods from the Board of Governors, Chancellor Metters, Vice Chairman of the Board of Trustees Lewis, and especially today's graduate faculty and staff who, like your family, are bursting with pride at your accomplishment and to be with your many friends and supporters of the University of North Carolina at Pembroke. Now, I cannot be here and observe that Chancellor uh, Metters is recovering from having joined the Pembroke Skydiving Club and acknowledging that our Governor Easley yesterday had um, an accident at the NASCAR uh, races. And I want to say to Senator Edwards, please look after yourself. <laughs> well, this is a special day for all of us. And those of us who are academics, these ceremonies help to remind us that we are linked in a very long chain that extends over centuries and it connects one generation of students and faculty with the next. The rituals of commencement are very important symbols for us that reaffirm the significance of the university itself, which is one of the oldest and indeed among the most venerable institutions in our society. Certainly UNC Pembroke, your alma mater, is a university on the rise, 
one increasingly recognized for the quality of the faculty and the academic program, and one that has a growing commitment to assist this region in advancing economic development. I hope the parents and students agree with me that we are seeing a physical transformation of this campus. It looks beautiful this morning, Chancellor Metter. We are proud of UNC Pembroke, and we are equally proud of each of you. And that pride is deeply ingrained in what defines North Carolina, a bedrock belief in the transforming power of education. Indeed, if North Carolina's sons and daughters can claim any birthright, it is the opportunity to pursue an affordable education in one of the very finest public universities anywhere in the world. Thank you. That is true. Yet I must acknowledge a serious concern that in the face of unprecedented growth in enrollment of this university, the unrelenting rounds of budget cuts now place that birthright in jeopardy. And I hope all of you will join us in the university in urging members of the North Carolina General Assembly to make the choices necessary so that an opportunity at UNC Pembroke is available at a very high quality and affordable price for the sisters and brothers of these graduates and for the next generation of students. To the graduates, you have witnessed a dramatic change in the world order during the time that you have been students here at UNC Pembroke. And we must acknowledge that the future that awaits you has been forever altered by terrorism and by global unrest. In a way you may have never thought possible, we know now with utmost certainty that this nation, this state, and this university cannot be insulated from what is going on around the world. And yet for all of these challenges and for all of the uncertainties that confront us now and that may lie ahead, this is also a time of great opportunity. To each of you in the class of 2003, we pay tribute to your hard work and perseverance to make this moment possible. But we must remind you that your education is not over. And if we in the university have done our jobs, you will be prepared to continue the process of learning throughout the rest of your life. We salute your achievements and we extend to you warmest greetings. Chancellor Meadows, President Brawl, Senator Edwards, faculty, graduates, family, and friends, I welcome you today on behalf of the University of North Carolina at Pembroke's Board of Trustees. It is with honor and respect that I congratulate each of the 2003 graduates on the completion of their educational journeys here at UNCP. I celebrate this momentous occasion with the friends, UNCP alumni, and families, especially the parents of our graduates. Looking over the vast sea of graduates fills me with the excitement and anticipation I felt when graduating from this great university. The same exhilaration was found me twice before when both of my sons graduated from UNCP as well. Graduates, the degree you receive today represents the knowledge, personal growth, lifetime friendships you have earned throughout your journey here at UNCP. I urge you to use your degree to blaze a path toward your future goals and dreams. 
As an alumni of UNCP, you join many former graduates who have used their degrees to open the doors of their dreams. So never stop pursuing your goals and dreams throughout your life. Today, you leave UNCP with the support from our dedicated faculty and as a respected graduate from the fastest growing university in North Carolina. As UNCP alumni, it is your responsibility to use the knowledge and training you received here to improve the lives of others. The UNCP trustees know that you will proceed to represent the university well. Once again, congratulations on your success and may your achievements here at UNCP open the doors to your dreams. Greetings from the faculty of UNCP to the alumni, Board of Trustees, the Administration, President Broad, Senator Edwards, and to the graduating students of UNCP. Graduation Day reminds me of the importance of a parent or guardian in the life of a child. Mark Twain, in his own fond remembrance of his father, is attributed with saying, when I was a boy of 14, my father was so ignorant I could hardly stand to have the old man around. When I got to be 21, I was astonished at how much the old man had learned in seven years. It is an odd property of life that the people who raise us get smarter as we get older. We all have someone in our life who has guided our steps, someone who has praised us, criticized us, lectured us, and in general seems to have been obsessed with interfering with our happiness. But now that you're graduating, it may occur to you that this person seems to be a little smarter than when you first started college. Why do you let this person know how much smarter they've gotten while you've been in school? They may be happy to hear it. Congratulations, class of 2003. You should feel proud. God bless you. God bless America. Thank you. What a great day. I am your student body president, Koji Sato, and on behalf of the Student Government Association, it is my pleasure to welcome you to this momentous day where everyone can celebrate for their achievement here at UNCP. Parents and family members, congratulations for, for believing in your loved ones and supporting them throughout their college career. Faculty and staff members, congratulations for successfully educating your students and making them believe in their true potential. UNCP alumni members, congratulations for keeping in touch, believing in this university for your future. But most importantly, graduates, congratulations for believing in yourself. Believing is achieving. This is what my mentor told me when I was doubting myself. Although I entered this university with a GED degree, I always remembered those words and believed in my abilities and my will to succeed. Because of that, I'm here today speaking to you at this podium and graduating with honors. If I can do it, anyone can, and I believe you guys can do it too. After you leave this building, you will have a whole new life ahead of you, and at times you may feel frightened or intimidated by the new challenges that you face, but at the same time, Remember that there are also unbelievable opportunities where you can go on and become one of the best. Whether you are attending graduate school or joining the working force, I want, to, I want you to remember the experiences you had here at UNCP and cherish them as you walk out of that door. Finally, this is my last day as your serving as your SGA president. It has been a pleasure serving each and one of you, and I wish you the best of luck 
Free Life and the Verse. And I'm going to leave you with a quote because I like leaving quotes. In every journey, there is a meaning. In every conflict, there is a growth. In every action, there is a purpose. And in every moment of doubt, remember to believe in yourself and sky becomes the limit. Congratulations. Good morning, graduates, honored guests, faculty. I bring you greetings from the Alumni Association. Although I am proud to be up here with the guests today, I want to speak primarily to the graduates. I wish you congratulations. I once sat in this very gym and graduated here as well, and I understand what a great moment that is today. I remember, I want you to remember, though, back four years ago before you came to Pembroke. You left home at that point to come here to go to school. And since then, you've gone back and you've, you've visited home and you come back and forth. And now you're getting ready to go on to another journey, another great adventure as you had here. And I want to let you know, as an alumni and as president of the Alumni Association, I want you to know that you now have a second home, a second home to come back and visit, to be a part of. You're part of a permanent family here at UNC Pembroke and we want you to be involved, and we want you to know that you always have a home here to come back and be a part of this. That just because you graduated today, because you crossed this stage, doesn't mean that you've, you're completely leaving something behind. You'll always be welcome here. And I hope that you'll make plans now, as you go out, to come back here in February for the homecoming festivities, and to call on us here at the alumni office at any time that we can be of help. You're going into a brave new world. And as you go in that world, it's always nice to know somebody and to have a helping hand. At the Alumni Association, we have people all over the place that may be in your field or may just know something you're going into. And you can always count on us to help you at that point, just to give you a, a nice word. Thank you today for letting me speak before you. It is truly an honor. And as my final words to you, I wish you a great congratulations for a job well done, and may God bless you as you go on in your life. We thank all of the distinguished speakers for their participation this morning. Dr. Woods, a special note, on your retirement from the University of North Carolina Board of Governors, we thank you for your long and distinguished service to this university. I would like to uh, have the esteemed faculty of this great institution stand for a moment to be recognized. And now, all the parents, brothers, sisters, loved ones of the graduates, would you stand for a moment? You truly made today possible for someone. I now ask Dr. Elizabeth Normandy, Professor of Political Science and Public Administration, to come to the lectern and introduce our commencement speaker, Senator John Edwards. Good morning. It is my very great pleasure today to introduce as our commencement speaker, Senator John Edwards. John Edwards grew up in Robbins, North Carolina. His father worked in the textile mill. His mother also worked outside the home in a variety of jobs. He attended the North Carolina public schools. As a first generation college student, he worked to finance his education at North Carolina State University and graduated with a degree in textile. He attended law school at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill and graduated with honors in 1977. He practiced law in Raleigh and gained a statewide reputation as an outstanding lawyer. Over a 20-year career, 
He specialized in representing those harmed by the negligence of others, receiving a public service award from the Association of Trial Lawyers of America for his work on the case of Valerie Lakey, a child who was injured by a faulty pool drain. He ran for office for the first time in 1998 and was elected to the U.S. Senate. He received nationwide attention in 2000 as a possible vice presidential choice. In the Senate, Edwards was a co-sponsor with, with Senator John McCain and Senator Edward Kennedy of the Bipartisan Patient Protection Act, which was passed by Congress in 2001. This bill provides comprehensive patient protection to ensure access to high-quality health care for Americans with private health coverage. He took a leading role in securing a bipartisan consensus to achieve the passage of the bill. Edwards has co-sponsored or supported legislation in a number of other areas, including national education reform, anti-terrorism, environmental protection, campaign finance reform, small business development, and banking modernization. He serves on four committees in the Senate, the Health, Education, Labor, and Pensions Committee, the Intelligence Committee, the Judiciary Committee, and the Small Business Committee. In the Senate and elsewhere, he has earned a reputation for being intelligent, hardworking, disciplined, and effective. The Senator is married to Elizabeth Edwards, and they have three living children. Catherine, who is a student at Princeton, a five-year-old daughter, Emma, and a three-year-old son, Jack. The Edwards met in law school at Chapel Hill, where they were both students. They were married in 1977, the year they graduated from law school. Mrs. Edwards is an accomplished attorney who had a successful 20-year law career prior to her husband's election to the Senate. Together, they have established an educational foundation in memory of their eldest son, Wade, who died in 1996. The foundation has established the Wade Edwards Learning Lab, which offers students after school access to computers and tutoring and technology. On January 2nd of this year, Senator Edwards announced his candidacy for his party's presidential nomination, becoming one of the first contenders for the presidency. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Senator John Edwards. Thank you. Thank you and good morning. Here in this place 116 years ago, the Native Americans of Robinson County petitioned their government for a school to train teachers for Native Americans. More than 40,000 days later, and as many students later, the acts of those founding fathers are making a difference in the life of this great state, in the life of this county, and in the lives of you the 2003 graduating class at the University of North Carolina at Pembroke. These are all facts that you know. You've heard them ever since you've been here. But have you really heard them? Have you heard what they've told you about what you can accomplish? Here's what they've been saying to you. You can accomplish anything to which you're willing to devote your time, your energy, your mind, and your passion. And here's what it takes. It takes action, the simple act of doing something. You never know as you move through life which things you do will simply be isolated deeds, good or bad. And you never know which you things you do, good or bad, will start an avalanche. Now the petitioners who started the Croatan Normal School knew that their work would be for good, but they never imagined this campus more than 100 years later. They started an avalanche that won't stop today, it won't stop 10 years or 50 years from now. Their good deed will live on. I have an idea of one way in which you, the graduates, can act in the days and years to come that can help build another avalanche for good. You won't be building an institution, in fact you'll be breaking one down, the institution of racial intolerance. This university, which was built as a school for Native Americans, 
is perhaps the best national model of racial diversity in this country. What better place to start such an avalanche? Ellie Fazell, who was a novelist, a lecturer, and a Holocaust survivor, said something a few years ago that stuck with me ever since. He was answering a question about how to stop the violence that surrounds all of us, particularly the violence that grows out of ethnic and religious hatred. He said that hatred's first toeholds are not in violent acts. Hatred's first toeholds are in words. We've all heard them. Words of intolerance, words of hatred, words that can lead to violence. But the first step in creating an atmosphere in which hatred, violence, and intolerance can thrive is actually tolerance. We become complacent, and we've too long tolerated the language of hatred. We hear someone called a demeaning name, and because we're civil, we don't confront the speaker. We hear it repeated again, and again we're civil and silent. In time, these words of hatred seem to have lost their meaning, or at least we've lost our sensitivity to them. Then the words change. They become more vitriolic, more angry, and each new mutation carries even more hatred, more intolerance and we can't speak or we don't speak. And then there becomes a gesture and then finally a threat. We decide to lead by example instead of confronting the hatred and we're quiet. We console ourselves that it is not that we don't see this great moral dilemma in front of us, is that we choose a path that avoids confrontation with it. But make no mistake, passivity is hatred's ally. In human relations, silence implies consent. And when finally there's violence, when the world that we've allowed to fester and grow finally blooms in the only way it could, in violence, we fail to look in the mirror for one of the causes. A few years ago, the state of North Carolina had the distinction of being home to the winner of the National Book Award for Fiction. We're all proud of Charles Frazier, who wrote Cold Mountain. In many ways, Mr. Fraser's story is all our stories. The main character, a man named Inman, is a soldier in the, in the Civil War. He walks away from a Raleigh military hospital and turns his face from a war that he doesn't understand and goes home to the North Carolina mountains. His journey is terrifying and rich, and he and those of us who read it learn many lessons from it. One lesson we learn is that ultimately we cannot walk away from the terror that surrounds us. Inman walked away from one battlefield, but the war followed him. We turn our backs daily on daily battlegrounds. A nasty remark about a person with a difficult accent. A joke at the expense of one wearing unfamiliar dress. A comment directed to someone with a different color skin. We excuse our silence because we say these are not our battles. We're civil. Confrontation is unproductive. We have too little time. It's not our job. Well, that's wrong. It is your job. You, the graduates of this great university, are prepared to confront the bigotry and hatred that we have yet to purge from this extraordinary country of ours. It is your job to create the best world you can, even if there may be some cost to you. You've been blessed. You've been the beneficiaries of one of the finest educations you could possibly get. You've been introduced to a world wonderful and rich in its diversity. You've sat at the banquet table for four years, and you owe something back. You and we have an obligation to make this community, our state, our great nation, and even this world more embracing. You and we have an obligation to stand up against the forces of intolerance that deny opportunity to others. You and we have an obligation to confront hatred and state clearly that we will not tolerate it. In my campaign for the United States Senate, I often quoted Robert F. Kennedy. And this is a quote actually taken by Kennedy from The Inferno by Dante. This is what he said. 
The hottest place in hell is reserved for those who, in times of moral crisis, do nothing. Well, it's May 10, 2003, and although you and your families are enjoying one of the great days of your life, today is one of a long list of days in which all of us face a moral crisis. Will we act or will we stand quiet? There was a book written around the years around, about the years around 1974, which is when I graduated from NC State. It was written by John Dean about his experiences in Watergate, and it was entitled Blind Ambition. I want to change that title a little and give you a title for the years following 2003. I want those years to be years of blind compassion, blind to the things that separate us, those niches in which hatred grows, blind to our own self-interest, which excuse our inaction on behalf of others, and compassionate in every sense of the word, loving and tender with our families and warm and supportive of those in our communities. And you might be thinking these are easy words to say, but they have no relation to the life that's unfolding in front of me. But they do. Your position in this world is about to change. It is easy to sit at the table, do your assigned part, never make anybody uncomfortable, don't break any rules, and don't break any ground. If that's what you choose to do with your degree in your life, no one will speak ill of you, but maybe no one will speak of you at all. Life is short. A thoughtful man I know compared it to the streak of a comet going across the sky. How brightly you burn on this journey will not depend on what you do for yourselves. It will depend, I am absolutely certain, on what you do for others, on how you treat others, on how you permit others to be treated in your presence. That fireball at the head of the comet will burn out. You can count on it. What remains, in fact, and in the minds of those who saw it, is the tail of the comet, what you leave behind. There are lots of ways to describe it. We think of heroes or martyrs or saints. But in truth, making a difference does not have to have a grand name. In fact, I think sometimes giving it a grand name makes us think we can't attain it. Well, I'm here to tell you that you can. I know you can because 116 years ago, your forefathers, the founding fathers of this great university, acted and they made a difference. In the recent months, our brothers, our friends, our kin have been braver than they thought possible on the ground and in the air above Iraq. Whether in military or civilian life, there are battlegrounds that are not hard to find as long as you're looking for them. Where there is hatred, there is your battleground. Where there is injustice, there is your battleground. Where there is misery, there is your battleground. Over 35 years ago, on April 4, 1968, Dr. Martin Luther King was killed. On that dark night in American history, Bobby Kennedy spoke to his fellow Americans. He urged us, and I quote, to tame the savageness of man and make gentle the life of this world. You, as graduates of this great university, as beneficiaries of a bounty very few will know, stand at the edge of a new world. Whether that world is better for your presence, whether you make gentle the life of this world, is entirely up to you. Congratulations to all of you, and God bless you. Senator Edwards, thank you for the heartfelt challenge to today's graduates and indeed to all of us. Now we come to the part that you've been waiting for. Some of you for four years, some of you for five years, six years, seven years, eight. <laughs> With the assistance of Chancellor Metters, Dr. Bill Gash, Registrar Sarah Bracken, Associate Registrar Marilyn Blackburn, and the deans of the schools and colleges, it will be my pleasure to present to you this year's graduates.
Thank you. I would like to invite a member of our Board of Trustees, Mr. McDuffie Cummings, to come forward to greet his daughter, who will be crossing this stage in a few minutes. Graduates of the College of Arts and Sciences, Bachelor of Arts, Department of American Indian Studies, Patricia Brewer Locklear, Department of Art, Mary Dimendefer Myers. Bridget DeLee Cannon. Jamie Ellis Summa Cum Laude. Gina Marie Gibson Cum Laude. Leslie Deanne Gray. Stephanie M. Grimes. Christopher Jason McGee. Michael Robert Mahala. Gina S. Pittman. Mary Ellen Hue. Dove Granger Roy. Cheryl Ann Brian Stewart Cum Laude. Sheila Stinson Swift. Charlene K. Valance. Department of English, Theater and Languages. Jennifer Carmen Allen. Alisa Dawn Bishop, Summa Cum Laude. Christina K. Gleffi, cum laude. Jessica Elizabeth Hall. Gawan Michael Johnson. Matthew Stephen Manahan, summa cum laude. Department of History. Melissa Blair Allen. Joshua Paul Beard. Paula D. Beck. Pamela Michelle Bryant. Kalista Collins Cribb. Heather Marie Davis. David J. Fry. Becky J. Lapolis Murphy, summa cum laude. Jennifer Lloyd Locklear. Geraldine Lowry. Kelly J. Maynard, cum laude. Lauren Elizabeth Miller. Daniel Adam Norwood. Lori C. Pabon. Jonathan Roland Smith, cum laude. Department of Philosophy and Religion. Tony Lee Russell. Department of Political Science and Public Administration. Brian Andrew Bell. Brian Ramon Brock. Derek Miles Cole. Brandon Jamal Collins. 
Ashley Elizabeth Dial. Misty Fernandez. David D. Graham. Rennie Kale Arrington, cum laude. Danielle Vidette Geraldo. David L. Ivey. Raquel M. Leek. Teresa M. Martin. Tamara Ann Oxendine. Jennifer Lynn Frivo. Dana Catherine Reese. Adrienne Zanetta Satchel. Department of Sociology and Criminal Justice. Brian Monte Austin. Kyle Evan Barbie. Connie J. Blackater. Benjamin Brian Byron Brewington. Diane Radford Briggs. <laughs> Shavanda Lane Chan. Jessica Lindsay Collins Kumlaudi. Kelly Romanthal Cook. Sharon Loretta David. Amy Catherine Dawkins. Jerry Vanessa Lashihabe Cum Laude. Naomi Louise Ellis. Mark A. Eubanks. Janice Lugenia Gibbs. <laughs> Christopher Aaron Gillum. Melanie S. Hammond. Coletta Anita Harris. Shanta Marlisa Hicks. Lisa Hunt. Ronald Maurice Johnson. Renata Lynn Jones. Delisa Ann Locklear. Demetrius Locklear. Jeanette B. Locklear. Sharon Janelle Love. Jamie Lynn Lowry. Carnelia Ann McCallum. Vanessa Lakeisha McCutcheon. Melinda Guanta McDonald. Stacy Lee Owensby. Nicole Oxendine. Andrew Edward Paul. Jacob Ryan Payton. Jessica Ann Piotrowski. Bradley Edward Schrader. Edward Joseph Stanton. Reggie Strickland, Jr. Jenna Rebecca Strickland McIntyre. Carrie L. Taylor. 
Jimmy Lance Thompson. Deneen Waddell. John Gilbert Walker. Jessica Lynn Wilcox. Bertina Williamson. Lauren Walters Young. April Lynn Zimmer. Degrees for Bachelor of Music. In Music, Amanda K. Ray Cum Laude. Bachelor of Science in Biology, Crystal D. Allen, Casey Lynn Barrett, Laura Lee Bowers, Betsy Kristen Bridgers, Crystal Rose Bullard Magna Cum Laude, Krita Maud Cummings. Eugenia Dial. Diana M. Galloway, cum laude. Michelle Ann Godet, cum laude. Lenita Jovina Hammonds, cum laude, Chancellor Scholar. Christina Marie Hudgens. Cassandra Hunt. Ashley Daniel Johnson, magna cum laude. Reagan Nicole Jones. Natasha M. Locklear. Cimarron L. Longstreet, magna cum laude. Charles K. Oxendine. Rebecca Ann Rice, cum laude. Lauren Ashley Sigpen, cum laude. William David Ussery, Jr. Mary Lewis Tate Walters. Rhonda Michelle Walters, magna cum laude. In chemistry and physics. Kamim al Sadi, magnum cum laude. Stephanie Brian Burney. Melissa Lou Dittmore Hen Hen Henry cum laude. Victoria Regina Hine. Florence Akinia Miguela. Joseph Ryan Oxendine. Tony M. Oxendine, cum laude. Mass Communication. Ashley Morgan Bennett. Mary Beth Brayboy. Brian Patrick Church. Priscilla Cologne. James Thomas Crane. April L. Diedrich. Sherry Ann Hunt, summa cum laude. Crystal Ann Locklear. Heidi Elaine Morton. Elizabeth Dawn Nichols, magna cum laude. Julie Ann Robbins. Sarah Elizabeth Stack. Andrea Buchstick. 
magna cum laude, Chancellor Scholar. Lori Denise White. Jennifer Marie Wood. Mathematics and Computer Science. Amy Carlisle Blackwell. Kenan Lamarck Collins, cum laude. Keith Cordell Chris. Jean Cornelius Deef. Lashana Renee Deef, magna cum laude. Nikki Nicole Edwards. Sunny Melissa Gentry, magna cum laude. Yusef Kader. Vadim Kruhe. Jerry Lynn Locklear. Latoya Artisi Lucy. Renee Sariba Myrick. Cassandra Lynn Oxendine. Rena Reese Renee Oxendine, Chancellor's Scholar. James D. Rogers, Jr. Brian L. Young, Summa Cum Laude. Psychology and Counseling. Eve Nicole Batten. Dawn Dabrika Dell, Cum Laude. Deborah Michelle Chavis. Veronica Emmanuel. Hilary Ray Griffin, Cum Laude, Chancellor Scholar. Reginald L. Harris. Veronica Hatton. Jessica Michelle Fitzpatrick, Cum Laude. Desmond T. McCoy. Kathleen Palmer Marsh, Cum Laude. Tony Nicole Morgan, Cum Laude. Alina Victoria Odom. Rebecca Nicole Power. Stacey Lene Skelton. Jessica Autumn Smith. Luciano Vera Jr. Robert James Wallace, cum laude. Bachelor of Science in Nursing. Brenda Bauer Cadell. Linda O. Chavis. Kimberly Locklear Hammond. Joy Allred Jones. Kimberly Zembry Krebs. Kathy Fouché Nelson. Kinzia Christine Ritter. Regina Pignon Smith, Summa Cum Laude. Pat Crouch Webb. Shannon L. Wynn. Bachelor of Social Work. Myron Bernard Anglin. Hugh Armstrong, Jr. Colleen Andrews Faulkner. Willie Shireen Graham. 
Alyssa Amanda Hunt. Melissa Ann Hunt. Christy Nicole Jacobs. Kimberly LaShawn Kelly. Natasha R. Locklear. Amanda Lowry. Gregory Maynor. Ryan Moore. Donna Lynn Morrison. Marlinda Platt. Nancy Saunders. Phyllis Teresa Story. Benita Fairley Thomas. Mitchell Thompson. Graduates of Business Administration. Omar R. Alasia. Wanda Carol Bartley. Kathy Gore Beck. Jeremy Alexander Blackwell. Jenny Marie Bridgers. Lisa Ann Tuning. Diane Childress Clark. Christopher D. Connor. Satina Michelle Covington. Sinisa Brett Cummings. Lee D. David, cum laude. Tao Abdel de Freitas. Elizabeth Geneva Deese. Evelyn Ruth Donnelly. Stephen Epps. Lisanne Fedor. Jonathan Carl Foley. Carlton Thomas Ganey. Trevor Tyson Amaker. Timothy Lee Hayden. Alan Michael Humphrey. Miranda Carmen Hursty. Kenneth Dwayne Jacobs II. Abdullah Mohammed Johnson. Robert Yoon Johnson. Kimberly Ann Klein. Amber Lee. William Andrew Leinbach. Ibretta Franchot Lewis. Stacy D. Lewis. Charlene J. Locklear. Heather Lynn Locklear. Timothy Rebus Long. Devin Anwan McCall. Tiffany Michelle McMillan. <laughs> Jamie Lee Malden. Brian Keith Mercer. Martha Odette Misha. Karen Miller. Rosa Miranda.
Matthew Gail Nant, summa cum laude. Tiffany F. Newton. Linda Maynard Oxendine, cum laude. Eric L. Phillips. Tabitha Ann Ransom, summa cum laude. Koji Sado, magna cum laude. Jordan R. Sampson. Norman Casey Sears. Julian Marie Stallings. Gladys Janelle Stevens. Cynthia Cox Turok. Joseph Evan Williams. Lisa Lorraine Wilson, cum laude. Graduates of the School of Education. Andrea Marie Beal, cum laude. Christy M. Benson. Lynn Jones Blank. Wendy Lynn Britt. Robin Bristow, cum laude. Carrie Patrice Bullard, magna cum laude. Helen Sloan Clark. Amanda Lee Coble, cum laude. Kimberly Dawn Dial. Lori Ann Driggers. Catherine Early Forrester, cum laude. Royce Bullard Locklear. Amdal Mangini. Heather Suzanne O'Toole. Jimmy Dale Price. Malcolm Matthew Quick. Jessica Elizabeth Reed. Arita Jacobs Rogers. Kimberly Joe Rogers. Tracy M. Stanbro, summa cum laude. Rebecca Marie Lee Petro, cum laude. Kimberly Ann Truman. Department of Health, Physical Education, and Recreation. Gary Patrick Acock. David E. Branch. Jamika Dixon. Victor Shane Freeman, cum laude. Travis Lee Jenkins. Monica Lynn Locklear. Ronnie Allen Locklear. Demetrius Reed McMillan. Samuel Matthew Reynolds. Chantario Deshaun Stevens. Byron Franklin Tedder. Christopher Bruce Walters. Jill Renee. Wilson.
Chancellor Meadows, I present to you those students who have earned baccalaureate degrees. on May 10th, 2003. You may now move your tassel to the left side if you've not already done so. Congratulations, class of 2003. You may be, you may be seated. <laughs> Graduates who have attained their master's degrees are recognized by an additional garment a hood, as well as a robe that is wider at the sleeves than the baccalaureate gown. Dr. Kathleen Hilton, Dean of the School of Graduate Studies, has the honor of hooding these students on stage. Master of Arts, Lori A. Coart. Gloria Tara Lowry. Laura Jacob. Rose Lowry Locklear. James Michael Bass. Leonard Basil Brown III. J. Patrick Thre Theodore Brewer. Ryan Lee Bullard. Adrienne Faith Campbell. Patty Sue Evers. Clifford O. Gore. Samuel P. Dye. Daniel J. Haley. Rhonda Denise Sanderson. Ricky Renee Cockrell. Amy Coppola Phillips. Christopher Sanderson. Jennifer Falk Brown. Doris Hammond Horn. Boyd.
Wade, Ivan Johnson. Master of Arts in Education. Linda Trimback Vassengame. Ginger K. Brayboy. Felicia Marie Gibson. Sandra Jean Campbell Striblin. April Nicole Bain. Beth Ann Novak. Eva M. Patterson Heath. Master of Business Administration. Alisa D. Akawili Keither. Nick T. Arena. Dwayne Frederick Ayers. Lydia Charlene Cox. Patrick W. Frenier. Brenda K. McCall. Kendall Blake Oxendine. Eric M. Pearson. Angel L. Pike. Kent Alexander Robinson. Teresa Simmons Smith. Gregory Nathan Taylor. Master of Public Administration. Robert F. Bell, Jr. Tammy Renee Little. Millicent Celeste Strickland. Mary Sandra Taylor. Master of School Administration. Paula Locklear Archambault. Antonia L. Dady. Julian Eldridge Carter. Wade Hampton Lowry. Diane Weaver.
Chancellor Metters, I present to you those students who have earned their master's degree. Will the new masters please stand? By virtue of the authority vested in the University of North Carolina, by the state of North Carolina, and the university entrusted to me, I hereby confer upon you the degree for which the faculty has certified you, together with all the rights and privileges thereunto pertaining, effective on May 10th, 2003, and I offer you my warmest congratulations. You may be seated. This has been the last piece of the journey our graduates are taking to receive their degree. It is a time to rejoice and to celebrate, a time when faculty and staff see a talented group of individuals ready to move on to claim their slice of the American dream. Those we have recognized today have much to be proud of. More than 50% of the individuals nationwide who started college with these graduates will never complete their degree if history holds steady. The majority of this year's graduates will be beginning, or have already begun, their professional careers as public school teachers, positions in North Carolina companies, national companies like IBM and Sony, commissioned officers in the United States military, and other professional endeavors, while others will pursue further graduate education in either master's or doctoral programs. Members of today's graduating class have also been accepted to attend professional schools of law, medicine, dentistry, pharmacy, and veterinary medicine, among others. Thomas Henry Huxley said in 1887 that perhaps the most valuable result of all education is the ability to make yourself do the things you have to do when it ought to be done, whether you like it or not. I believe this point, this point is well made, that to be here today, you had to make decisions that were not always easy ones. You had to study or finish your paper when there was at least a dozen other things you would have preferred or needed to be doing. Your family and friends are proud of you, but let me tell you, the faculty and staff of your university are equally proud. You are, in reality, our final exam. The university will judge on how you do. At this time, I would like to give a special acknowledgement to four Board of Trustees members who are leaving the Board after eight years of distinguished service. Dr. Cheryl Locklear, Cheryl, would you stand, please? Mr. Henry Lewis, Mr. McDuffie Cummings, and Mr. Roger Osdine, who had done, yes, Roger's here, great. Can we give them a hand, please? Thank you very much. Graduates, you'll never appreciate until you become a trustee someday, we hope, what a wonderful job these people do for your university. In closing, I'd like to say that today, you take away much more than a college degree. You take away memories, friendships, which will stay with you throughout your lifetime. On a personal note, I recently broke three bones in my ankle while attempting a not-so-successful landing from parachuting out of a plane at 13,000 feet. Over the last few weeks, I've been asked, don't you wish you'd never jumped out of that plane? My answer is an unqualified no. Now, I do wish I'd had a better landing. You can bet that if I ever do it again, I will land better. But my point is not to focus on the outcome, rather than enjoy the journey to the outcome <clears throat> and to learn from the journey regardless of the outcome. We're never too old to enjoy and learn from our experiences, especially our mistakes. This class, 2003, is a very special one to me. Many of them came in the same day I did in the fall of, 2000, of 1999, so we, uh, I wish you well. This concludes the spring of 2003 commencement of the University of North Carolina at Pembroke. You are all welcome to join us for reception honoring the 2003 graduates and their families outside under the tent. Please check the map in your program for the location of your college or school. Thank you. Grand Marshal Geller. <laughs>